Hello, my name's Ben. Do you mind if I examine you? No. Consider the patient's nutritional state. You should record their height, weight, waist circumference, and calculate the BMI. Look for nail abnormalities such as leukonychia or quilonychia. Turn them over for me. Palmer erythema is a sign of chronic liver disease, although it can be normal in pregnancy. Look at the nail specifically for finger clubbing. This is occasionally due to gastrointestinal disorders such as liver cirrhosis, inflammatory bowel disease or malabsorption. Could you place your arms up in front of you and cock your wrists back, please? Asterixis is a coarse, flapping tremor seen in liver failure. It can also be seen in cardiac, respiratory and renal failure. Look for needle tracks, tattoos and a paucity of axillary hair. More than five spider nevi in the distribution of the superior vena cava is a sign of chronic liver disease, although again, this can be normal in pregnancy. Remember that this includes the upper back and you also need more exposure than is demonstrated here. Palpate for cervical lymph node enlargement, which may be present in lymphoma or metastatic disease. Bilateral parotid swelling can be a feature of chronic alcohol abuse Bring your legs back up. Just rest your head back. Look for spider nevi in the face and pala and jaundice in the eyes. I'm going to look in your eye. Look up for me. Under natural light. And down. Jaundice is a diffuse yellow discoloration of the sclera. Now can you open your mouth? Look for angular stomatitis and aphthous ulcers. Also inspect the dentition. You may smell a characteristic fetor. And stick your tongue out. And the tongue in. can be affected by iron, B12 or folate deficiencies. I'm just going to lie you flat. Examine the abdomen with the patient supine. The head should be supported to relax the abdominal muscles and the arms by the sides. Expose from the xiphis sternum to the symphysis pubis yes. and look carefully for scars, stomata, distension or pulsations. Do you have any pain anywhere? No. I'm just going to feel very gently. Let me know if it's sore. Ensure that your hands are warm and sit on or kneel beside the bed. Use your right hand, keeping it flat in contact with the abdominal wall, and avoid using your fingertips. Watch the patient's face for any sign of discomfort throughout the examination. I'm now going to feel deeper. Again, let me know if it's sore. You should feel each region of the abdomen in turn with superficial palpation, and then repeat with deeper palpation. If the patient has reported a sight of tenderness, begin distant from this and work towards it. In addition to feeling for tenderness and masses, you should assess the muscle tone. Now can you take some deep breaths in and out? Feel for the edge of the liver as it descends during inspiration. Start in the right iliac fossa and work superiorly by one centimetre at a time. If the liver is palpable, describe the characteristics of the liver and its edge. Locate the upper border of the liver by percussing down from the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. Measure the distance in centimetres from the upper border of dullness to the liver edge. Feel for the spleen in a similar fashion. Again, can you take some deep breaths in and out? Starting near the umbilicus and working up towards the left hypochondrium. If you do not feel the spleen, you should explore the length of the costal margin as its position is variable. Can you roll onto your right hand side, please? If you have still not felt the spleen, repeat this examination with the patient in the right lateral position. Take some deep breaths in and out again for me, please. Again, palpate using your right hand, starting at the umbilicus and working towards the left hypochondrium. Place your left hand behind the patient's left lower ribs, gently pulling the rib cage forward. And roll back onto your back. Percuss over the lower ribs and lateral chest wall to confirm or exclude the presence of splenic dullness. To detect lesser degrees of kidney enlargement, place one hand behind the patient's back below the lower ribs and the other anteriorly. You sometimes need to press firmly, but take care as this may be tender. The kidney is typically blottable. Can I ask you to sit forward, please? With the patient sitting up, you can palpate the renal angles directly. But again, take care to suspect tenderness. Let me know if it's sore. The renal angle is that between the 12th rib and the lumbar vertebra. Now I'm going to tap your back. Again, let me know if it's sore. 
If palpation is non-tender, gentle percussion with the closed fist may elicit tenderness. Check for pitting edema over the sacrum by applying pressure for a few seconds and seeing if indentation remains. Can you lie down flat again for me, please? Percuss from superior to inferior in the midline over the abdomen. The point at which resonance changes to dullness marks the top of the bladder. Percuss ascites by starting in the midline and working laterally toward the flanks. In the presence of ascites, there will be dullness laterally. Can I get you to roll onto your left hand side? Turn the patient and wait a few seconds. If the note changes from dull to resonant, this is shifting dullness and indicates ascites. And could you roll back for me? And now can you place your hand down the middle of your tummy? A transmitted fluid thrill is another way to demonstrate gross ascites. Here the patient's hand prevents transmission of the impulse through their skin. Next, use the diaphragm of your stethoscope to auscultate for bowel sounds. These gurgling sounds of normal peristalsis are usually present every 5 to 10 seconds, but you need to listen for at least 2 minutes before concluding that they are absent. Listen over the kidneys for the brewery of renal artery stenosis, and over the liver where a brewery may be caused by hepatitis or hepatoma, and over the umbilicus for an arterial brewery that might suggest an atheromatous or aneurysmal aorta. Warn the patient about testing for a succussion splash. I'm going to give your tummy a shake. An audible splash more than four hours after oral intake indicates delayed gastric emptying due either to gastric outlet obstruction or gastroparesis. Inspect the legs for pyoderma gangrenosum and test for edema at the ankles, which may be due to hypoalbuminemia. Although not shown here, you should also examine the hernial orifices and genitalia and perform a digital rectal examination.